assalamu alaikum everyone i hope you are well i am good to alhamdulillah okay so today's episode is very special because uh, we are including a minority a christian in our talk in this series uh, she is uh, the different one because uh, she is going to present she is going to represent her community her christian community and she is going to educate us about the christianity and also the christian's contribution in the identity of lahore ramadhu sher is an architect and she is uh, she is practicing architecture with a renowned firm and also she is visiting resource person at punjab university new campus so besides her um, practice of architecture she is also doing her teaching and hamas is as well uh, so i'm very glad and i really uh, admire her for her efforts and serving her serving this country pakistan and her community of law in the hor with her skills and by keeping her identity intact she is serving as a christian and she is uh, adding to the she is adding to the christian identity and their projects being done over here and she is being an active participant for it so i really appreciate her for her efforts and uh, her contribution to the identity of lahore i hope you enjoy it the episode and i hope you appreciate it as well to share your feedback and let's get started with let's welcome her on the episode assalam alaikum akhida roma how are you and how's life going wa alaikum assalam all fine and life is going very busy these days um with <laughs> my job and my teaching thing and plus my master's thesis everything is going side by side and my uh, schedule is quite tough but still i manage my time to to be here around with you and thank you so much for having me today to talk about the christian minorities in lahore and how they have been living here since partition and how they have been contributed during the formation of our beloved homeland and i think it is very important to know the historical background of our city through each and every perspective which you have been previously covered to this uh, platform and you have been documented to it and it will be very beneficial for our future generation i believe and uh, we will explore our con- uh, city's uh, identity and history and it will keep us even more grounded i think history is our identity and we should not ignore it that's the goal and i hope we are achieving it and thank you so much for making time because i know you were so busy and it was quite tough to get you on the get you on time and recording because you were so busy but i'm so glad that you managed it that you have taken the niche you have accepted the call for it So thank you so much. Uh, let's get started with your presentation because I'm looking forward to it. Go ahead. In the name of God is the start of all good things. So uh, before reaching towards our main topic of interest, we will shortly discuss about Christianity. What is Christianity? Christianity is a major religion stemming from the life, teachings, and death of Jesus Christ. Nazareth Nazareth is a city of Jerusalem where Jesus Christ was born in the first century CE and it has become the largest of the world's religions and uh, geographically the most widely diffused of all the faiths and who is a christian christian is a believer and a follower of Christ a person or uh, who believes in the teachings of Christ is called christian and who was the christ the anointed one synonymous with and translating to greek abriu messiha a title which was given to jesus of nazareth he was born in nazareth so he has been called jesus of nazareth uh this is a saying of richard rohr about christianity he says that christianity is a lifestyle and a way of being in the world that is simple non violent shared and loving however we made it into an established religion and all that goes with that and avoided the lifestyle change itself one could be warlike greedy racist selfish and vain in most of christian history and still believe that jesus is one 
personal Lord and Savior. So our basic belief is that that Jesus is one, and He is our personal Lord, and He is our Savior. The world has no time for such silliness anymore, and the suffering on earth is too great. Now the we will see the vital role of minorities in formation of uh, Pakistan. Ongoing scenario within the state of Pakistan compelled me to recall and erase the dust on the subject of the formation of Pakistan, along with that to bring light on the sacrifices, collaboration, and commitment of minorities with Pakistan. Uh, Pathan Joseph was a prominent and sincere Christian who really worked hard for the cause of Christian. And he was a well-known journalist of that time, and was a very extreme opposer of the British Empire. And he had an experience of almost twenty-six newspapers before the partition. And he also used to write in favor of freedom and against the government of that time. And Kaid was in good terms with the Khan Joseph, and he appointed him as the first uh, editor of Don newspaper. The second personality is Divan Bahadur S. P. Singha Late, and he was born in Pasur district of Sialkot, and he was elected in 1937 as a member of Punjab Assembly. There were only three members: uh, Divan Singha, Fazal Lahi, and Mr. Sisal Bhone from the Christian community in Punjab Assembly. And he was also the speaker of the acting assembly. In Bombay Commission, Christian members strongly defended the cause of Pakistan and Muhammad Ali Jinnah. And in nineteen forty-two, All Indian Christian Association directed all the Christian community to migrate to Pakistan to protect themselves from expected violence in different sects and communities. Christian community in Pakistan. Christians make up roughly one point six percent of the current Pakistan population, and uh, that percentage has been steadily declining in recent years due to immigration. As a minority in Pakistan, one notices that the Christian community is often lumped together under one generic classification. Basic classification. Is only one, despite coming from different backgrounds and histories and with different belief. But basic classification is only one. The Christians are divided into predominantly two denominations in Pakistan: the Protestants and Catholics, and they are further classified depending on further historical origin. Uh, for instance, seventy-five percent of all the Christians in Pakistan are from rural Punjab sides. While the remainder are born Christians, born Christians are Anglo Indians that have been migrated from India. It is believed that one of the first uh, instances of the spread of Christianity in the region came during a visit by one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ, Saint Thomas, who visited subcontinent back in fifty two A D. And however, Christian culture drastically transformed when the Europeans arrived in India around the Mughal era in 1500s. And India to the Punjab, they built churches after receiving permission from emperor of that time, Akbar. Uh, Saint Thomas was the apostle and a preacher and a Christian martyr. Uh, according to tradition, Saint Thomas passed through Texla on his way to India and preached at the court of King Gandopers, an early third century Syriac word known as the Acts of Thomas, discovered in eighteen twenty two in Syria. Says the king gave some money to the saint and ordered him to build a. Uh, royal palace. Saint Thomas, however, gave out all of the money in arms, and when the king discovered his disopinion, he ordered that the saint be burned alive. Meanwhile, the king's brother Gad uh, died, and then miraculously came back to life. Uh, where upon he recounted that in heaven he had seen a palace 
built for candle fairs by St. Thomas. St. Thomas was among the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. He visited subcontinent, as I have mentioned before. The king pardoned the saint and converted to Christianity along with the people of the capital. Circa is protected under the Antiquities of uh, Act 1975, passed by the Pakistani parliament and listened, listed as a UNESCO's World Heritage Site. So, uh, there is a museum in Texala uh, which holds the old manuscripts and the cross of St. Thomas over there in their archives. So, the origin of Christianity in subcontinent at that time uh, was brought to the subcontinent by the 12th apostle named St. Thomas. And the famous Texila cross is now uh, kept framed at the Cathedral Church of the Resurrection in Punjab's capital city. And Sarkar archaeological site is in Punjab province. Do you know about Texila's museum? Uh, no, not really. I I'm not sure about it. I'm I haven't. Of course, I'm naive in this area. Okay. Achha. Christian pilgrims, pastors, priests, foreign tourists, and students of history are among the top visitors. Uh, ye, uh, said the forty-seven-year-old tour guide. Achha, uh, sorry, this is the site where the high throne of the Saint Thomas found in Texila. Texila is known as the center of the ancient Buddhist uh, kingdom of Gandhara from 500 BC to AD 200 and archaeologists have uncovered the site of several Buddhist monasteries at Sarka, which also contains temples belonging to Jainism, Hinduism and the Rastians. And at this site, they found the high throne of St. Thomas. So this is the clear evidence that St. Thomas visited in that particular century in subcontinent. And from there, the Christianity's origin began. Cross of St. Thomas. But when the cross was found in 1935, it was taken as a sign of the spread of Christianity to this part of the world as early as the years immediately after the death of Christ. The cross was later presented to Angelica and Bishop of Lahore. Texila cross is kept at the Cathedral Church of Resur Resurrection, which is on Mall Road, Lahore. And yes, no notice was paid to the fact the cross was not found in any datable spectrum of the rooms, but by a former tiling a field outside the rooms of Sarkar City which is the second city of Texala, and I think it is really historical. Christianity in Pakistan. During 1800s, Goa and other cities saw a large immigration of its population to Bombay and Karachi when the British annexed Sen, and migrants traveled in hopes of an improvement of their economic prospects and they settled in Pakistan before partition. And immigration to Pakistan continued post -part partition and today the majority of the Catholic population can be found in Karachi and majority of the Protestant population can be found in Lahore, Quetta and Hyderabad. And Christianity is the third largest religion in Pakistan. As they came to Pakistan, Christian migrants brought their culture, which has been passed down the generations and which is the bond holding together the community. And minorities are free to celebrate and continue to serve their country, extending their community spaces, religious places. Anyone who is curious to learn or wishes to be a part of the festivities. But it is time for our country to push for religious tolerance and protect minorities on a national level. Uh, there are few feudal areas in Punjab and all over the Pakistan where still minorities are not protected. Pakistan's cultural scene for years. Christians have been an important part of Pakistan's cultural scene for years. Olin David was one of Pakistan's most eminent painters. Uh, while the Benjamin sisters, A. Nair, S. P. John, Shalom Xavier, and Louis 
Mumbai into Excel and continue to work as the renowned musicians of Pakistan. And among others, Wallace Mathias was the first Catholic to play for the Pakistan cricket team back in 1955. And Jack Brito was an Olympic hockey player who represented Pakistan in 1950. This is a demographic record of Christian population in Pakistan. In two thousand and seventeen, there were at this number of Pakistani Christians, and here, with the majority of Christians resides in um, Punjab. It's one point eight eight percent. Then in Sindh, zero point eight five percent. KPK point one four, Balochistan point two eight, and Islamabad capital territory four point three four. And uh, there is no such data available for Azad Kashmir or Gilgit Baltistan as per August twenty twenty one. Christianity in Lahore, Punjab. We will see how Christianity has uh, how Christian community has contributed. Uh, in the hall, in terms of architecture, in terms of education, and in terms of healthcare, so Lahore has inherited rich cultural, religious, and political history over millennia, and it was a home to multifarious iconic buildings tracing Muslim, Christian, Sikh, Hindu, and Buddhist history in the region. And the protection of life and property of the minorities living in Pakistan is a responsibility of the government, and There is no doubt that Pakistan is the safest country for the minorities, as compared to India, where, according to the ideology of Kaidya Azam Muhammad Ali Janah, the minorities are given religious freedom and protection. The Christian community of British India vehemently supported the cause of Pakistan and made substantial contribution towards it. So Punjab is blessed with an abundance of beautiful and historical churches. British imported mud from Jhelum, and from that mud they manufactured bricks, and hence they created an expressionism through bricks in all of their buildings that has been aligned across the Mall Road. And the city of Lahore was conquered by the British in mid nineteenth century, which was then the city spread outside the Mughal walled city of Lahore. And considering the potential of the city, the British introduced new building typology and architecture in the city in terms of education institutions, railroads, shopping malls, museums, ports, churches, and cathedrals. And today, many significant architectural edifices of British rule can be found in the city of Lahore, and they are mixed with the Mughal and British construction techniques known as the Anglo-Mughal style or Hyderabad style. And the great grand structure of the Cathedral Church of the Resurrection was built in the Neo-Gothic architectural style. And among all the other cathedrals of Lahore, this magnificent structure is an example of. Gothic architecture, which resembles church uh, cathedrals found in Europe. So these are the pictorial views of British era building uh, across the Mall Road, and I think every person who belongs to Lahore must be familiar to them. This is the Cathedral Church of Resurrection. This is Kellington Market. Our Punjab University's old campus, National College of Arts, Lahore Museum, Town Hall, Punjab Assembly, and that GPO's building, General Post Office. Oh, colonial era churches in Lahore, Christian architecture in Lahore. Colonial era churches in Lahore holds a prom a prominent Lahore a role in Lahore city skyline, and there are numerous churches across the city. Being constructed by British in neo-Gothic architectural style during that era, that architectural style was common all over the world in Europe and in America as well. And the Cathedral Church of Resurrection is also known as Lahore Cathedral, is an United Protestant Cathedral in the heart of Lahore. This is it. Here's the picture.
so we can see the gothic architectural elements flying buttresses pointed arches here is the plan of the church which is a cross plan the altar site is circular in shape entrance of the church is always called the narthex the central part is called the nave and the sides on and on the both sides of the naves these are called the aisles this is the right aisle and this is the uh, this is the left aisle and this is the right aisle and this is its front elevation these are the two bell towers with uh, rose windows these are called rose windows these are called flying buttresses and these are pointed arches with columns here is an other view there is another view of the church this is the interior you can see the diffused light is coming from the roof which creates the secular impact these are called spindles the floor is made up of marble and the roofing is of plaster and towards the altar side has been decorated with wood and furniture is also of wood this is another cathedral church located on the mall road lahore uh, near masjid e shohda this is the cathedral of roman catholic archdiocese of lahore the previous one of was from the protestant archdiocese of archdiocese of lahore uh its architectural style is also neo gothic architectural style with domes and uh, circular arches rose windows towers with canopies here is the entrance you can see the height and massing slight top view of the church the dome dome is a basic element of uh, catholic church architecture they can be identified through the dome while the protestant churches uh, you cannot see the dome dome is a basic element of every religious architecture as it represents the heaven it is a depiction of heaven here is the interior view you can see the ripped vault and roofing circular arches rose windows This is another church located on uh, Nila Gumbad Road, Lahore. This is also a neo-Gothic church. Its name is Holy Trinity Church. Trinity means three: the Father, Son, and the God. So, the triangular facade, red bricks, and circular arches. These are all the colonial era churches. here is another view of the church you can see the expressionism to bricks this is another church st mary magdalene church in lahore cantonment which was specifically built for the army officers to worship there at that time as cantonment is a place for army officers St Mary Magdalene Church is the biggest worshiping place in Lahore and for over 163 years the St Mary Magdalene Church has enriched the spiritual lives of countless Pakistanis as well as visitors and tourists from all over the world this is the bird i view a cross shaped plan white in color which shows the purity buttresses pointed arches the height and the tower major construction materials are stones and the limestone this is another view this is another view after its restoration its roof has been repaired few years ago and the exterior facade has been repainted as well these are its few details here is the interior picture But the roof is made up of wood these are the wooden crosses these are called spindles these are the pointed arches marble flooring and wooden furniture 
the concept of trinity is very important in the churches the trinity is about the father son and god number 3 you can see the three arches over towards the altar side as well the main arch and the uh, left arch and the right arch this is another church nolakha presbyterian church as empress road lahore small church in neo gothic architectural style with domes and circular arches this is st andrew's church as empress road lahore which was built for the railway headquarters officers like St Mary Magdalene Church was built for army officers. This church was specifically specifically built for uh, railway station, uh, railway headquarters employees. And Lahore's railway headquarters is adjacent to that church building, and both architectural styles correlate with each other. There are round arches, sloping roof. This is the clear okay. front picture of the church with rounded arches these are the ribs this is a dome this is a sort of a minaret minaret we call it minaret in islamic architecture and bell tower in or tower temple in christian architecture with a cross there was a cross over here which is called saint andrew's cross which is under the process of maintenance and repair and this church named before the saint and these are the um circular arches sloping roofs this roof has been uh, replaced few years ago originally it was covered with some wooden sheet now it has been replaced with a galvanized sheet to make it weather resistant and rust proof this is its verandas verandas are very important part of church architecture as they bring the cooler air inside they are necessary for cross ventilation this is a veranda and veranda's roof is of wooden cladding these are called dentils round arches and dentils this detail is called dentil this is the interior picture of the church this is the roof these are the ionic columns and towards the high altar you can see a dome this is the half dome which again depicts the heaven circle shows the infinity this is another view this is the clear picture of its roof this is another church located on emperance road lahore st anthony's church one of the oldest church in roman catholic archdiocese of lahore and it was constructed in 1899 and it is fondly known as the railway church this is also for railway employees you can see the central tower buttresses and the pointed arches and central rose window here is the side view interior view now moving towards the education uh, sector christian institutions and their contribution for education in lahore victorian age institutions missionary schools have played a vital role in the education of pakistan no doubt if we throw a spotlight on missionary education system then we cannot ignore to appreciate their great existence and role in education not only within the city of lahore even across the country as well and the contribution of the missionary schools for education in lahore they are all affiliated with the catholic board of lahore and few are with protestant board of lahore and they are not only striving to educate their students but they also tend to develop their ability socially morally and spiritually by providing quality education no doubt they are contributing very well to strengthen up education system worldwide i have listed down few christian institutions in, uh, in lahore here is a list of some schools universities and colleges i think everyone must be familiar Cathedral Higher Secondary School. Our uh, former Prime Minister Imran Khan studied there. Famous cricketer Wasim Akram studied there. Saint Peter's High School, Wari Road, Lahore. Saint Anthony's Higher Secondary School, Lahore. Former Prime Minister Mohammad Mian Awaz Sharif studied at Saint Anthony's Higher Secondary School. 
Saint Francis High School, the Convent of Sacred Heart School, the Convent of Jesus and Mary, Queen Mary School, Saint Mary's High School, Don Bosco High School, Canadian Academy High School, and then Canadian College for Women University, Farman Christian College, and Lahore College of Theology at Raven Road, Lahore. So this is the Lahore College of Theology, Raven Road, Lahore, which is my own personal project. I own this project. This is a theological college. Uh, this is it. Uh, the building is divided into three parts. It is a theological complex. The, the central part is the church, and this is the library complex, and this is the college building. You can see the pointed arches, red brick building, and white plastered facade with ionic columns. So the buildings are interlinked with each other through this shaded walkway. These are the series of arches. You can see the dome as well at the entrance portico of the church. This is its interior view which has also been inspired by the medieval era cathedral churches. These are the ribs, pointed arches, columns in plaster. This is another interior view. Now let's come towards the healthcare architecture. United Christian uh, Hospital is a 2050-bed hospital located in Lahore at Kulberg Main Boulevard. In 1964, Pakistan's first open heart surgery was performed in the hospital. This is the picture of that hospital in its original state. It is a general hospital. This is the picture after its little maintenance or renovation. Lures have been painted in different colors and I think this is not the right idea as it is not complementing the it is not complementing its original facade. It is not merging with that. Do you think so? Well, I don't think so that it's merging, but it is being in contrast. And to this picture, I can, uh, it's not that bad to me, but maybe if I look for the whole picture or the whole facade, maybe then it's, it would look different and it would not go well together. I guess so. Maybe because if it's a children block, then it, it's good. You know, the children like colors and that yes, concept would be good. It is a gynae and pediatric department of that hospital. Okay, um, so I your, think it's, it's your fine if that's is, right. yes. so, uh, This was my thesis project. I proposed this extension for 50 beds. This is the central part which is in existence and the this area is the upgraded part of the hospital. This is the entire master plan and friends, the parking places and the landscape area. My main idea was to retain and sustain the existing facade. I haven't demolished anything. I retained the structure. So Initially, the structure was exactly the same which I have been proposed for my thesis project. This is the front view and this is the side view. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. It was so amazing to hear about the Christianity in Pakistan and how it has contributed uh, among the great things that we see around us especially the architecture and i was very intrigued to see it. um i i i really want to see the cathedrals and churches of that we see in lahore so i just want to ask you one thing first that are uh, people allowed to visit churches normally or do they have to take some permission or anything like that no everyone is allowed to go there okay. yes you can call the priest first that we want to come and visit we belong to this in this community and we want to just visit the church we want to pray there 
church mosque or temple or a gurdwara is a place of worshiping i think everyone can go there and perform their prayer it is a structure to pray just and so, uh, it has been named as church mosque or temple or a gurdwara basically it is a place to worship our god and the god is one so everyone is allowed to go there okay yeah, is, maybe uh, uh, the documentation is uh, something that needs permission right yes okay. if you want to document something then you will have to take the permission from the concerned authorities otherwise you can visit it okay, okay great okay great and i also i wanted to appreciate you that you uh, are contributing to the uh, to your community and to the architecture uh, as per your degree as well as your um, identity you know so i really appreciate that you are uh, being a part of it uh, you have worked on the thesis in uh, in the restoration of the care the hospital and also you are working with you are also associated with in uh, construction and uh, design of uh, a college that you mentioned the whole college of theology oh, uh, yes yeah so uh, i re- it's it's so amazing that you are doing it and uh, i feel proud of it i guess being a junior of yours <laughs> i feel mm-hmm. proud thank you so much okay so how is the experience i, I was very relieved to know that uh, uh, minorities are being uh, protected in pakistan uh, it was a relief to know that trust me it was and i hope that in future we are uh, we have more uh, protection for plans and more opportunities for them as well so that um, more um, yes and uh, so that more peace is built and harmony is built among uh, us all rather than the separation and uh, the word uh, the words of qaida azam stays intact and they are practiced upon as well so definitely yeah definitely. that's true okay thank you so much for your time i hope my pleasure you enjoyed my it pleasure and I enjoyed it. I I enjoyed it a lot, and I hope people will Thank like it, so and much. they will love to know about this side of uh, this I side of so. Lahore as well. So thank you so much. Take care, Thank and Allah Hafiz. My pleasure. Again, take care now.